Sure, as you can tell by the title of the video, we're doing an engine swap on the truck. Um, the old 7.3 hasn't been a... Well, there's, there's been a series of unfortunate events that have led to the demise of the old 7.3. Uh, the main issue, this winter, we had a real cold snap and the truck was starting like okay in the cold. You know, those, if you know anything about those old IDIs, they're they're awful in the cold. We had this real cold snap and I forgot to plug it in one day and I uh, went out to start it, fought with it for, I don't know, an hour, hour and a half. Could not get it to start. And uh, I'm a very impatient person, uh, impatient person. So uh, I went right to the diesel engine death spray and uh, lofted it towards the uh, air intake. And uh, it's never been the same since. It, it still it starts and runs, drives, whatever, but it's, I mean, 70 degrees out, it shouldn't hit the key, it should fire right up, but it'll sit there and crank and crank and crank and crank before it finally fires up. So I believe that it, I, uh, you could actually hear it when I use the ether. You could hear the pre-ignition and the cylinders just, you know, trying to push the wrong way before they hit top dead center. So I'm fairly certain that it cracked a ring or two, and uh, so I'm a little bit low on compression here and there. It was never a, uh, a stallion, what, what am I looking for? I don't know, it wasn't ever that awesome to begin with. It was always kind of a slow pig and, you know, pulling something up the hill, a load of stone, dirt, whatever, you gotta, you know, unlock your hubs and put her into four low and even still you're just crawling along and... I looked into rebuilding the engine because that was my original plan. Pull the engine out, rebuild it, put it back in. And I was like, if you're going to do pistons, rings, you're gonna, if you're going to do the works, it was like $1,300, $1,400. I was like, I really don't want to put that money into that old piece of junk, you know. Because when you get done with it, it's still going to be a turd. It's still going to be slow. Unless you put a turbo kit on it, and then you're talking even more money. So I started researching engines. And, uh, you know, everyone everyone and their brother, I'm going to put a Cummins in it, and I'll be real cool. So I have a Cummins in my truck, my my fummins. <laughs> so, anyways, didn't mean to offend anybody. If you got a Cummins in your truck, that's that's perfectly fine. Nothing wrong with that. So, anyways, one thing you don't see a lot is uh, Caterpillar swaps. So that is what we went with. I picked up this beauty. Uh, it was out of a school bus. It is a Cat 3126. Came out of a 2000, I believe it was a Freightliner FS60 or whatever, whatever school buses they put these in. Uh, was told that it has between 85 and 90,000 miles. Um, came missing a few parts, so I've been trying to source those. I really want to test fire this before I dig too far into this project because I, I haven't heard it run. So that always kind of makes you nervous. But I got a smoking deal on the engine. If it runs, it was a smoking deal. If not, it was a very expensive boat anchor. But um, missing stuff like the uh, tensioner, the belt, the, uh, the starter's gone. They went ahead and chopped all the wires right off of this ECM plug. So, um, most important part here, the air compressor. I was missing, missing, yeah, missing the governor. So we had to get a new one of those. Look, those are cheap. This, is, this was the selling point right here. I saw that compressor and I was I started throwing money at the guy. Train horns are coming back. Woo! Woo! <laughs> um, oh, transmission. I also got transmission. He threw the transmission in for free and I did some research later and I found out why. These aren't very desirable transmissions. It even said online, most, most uh, scrap yards, junk yards, whatever, that's kind of where I got this. It was like a big rig chop shop. Uh, they, they'll throw them in for free with the engine because they can't sell them so but it's uh it's an allison at 545 um it doesn't have a lockup converter it doesn't have overdrive but it's all hydraulic there's no electronic controls on it there is a neutral safety switch which they were so kind to chop that right off at the uh, nub there uh, i believe this is the reverse switch and then this is a uh, shift modulator so everything in it is hydraulic we ran so no electronics to deal with, which is nice. And I really don't plan on doing any cross country trips. So I'm not, this is more of an around town grocery getter kind of vehicle. 
You can haul a lot of groceries with it. So I did get the torque converter for that as well. It's inside. So that was kind of a plus. So, so this should be a very fun project. And hopefully not too challenging. Um, I've never, I've done one engine swap before and that was kind of a cookie cutter you know 2.5 liter to 2.5 liter subaru so that was pretty simple and straightforward this is going to be a lot more of a challenge uh, as of right now the plan is i'm going to pull the whole front end of the truck off pull the cab right off of it engine and transmission out of it see if i could sell them i'm hoping i can sell them um, boxing the frame from the front to the uh, the bed or as far back as I can get so that's going to be kind of a fun challenge because I can't really work on the truck in the garage because the garage is too short and it's not very wide and uh, I'm going to have to get an extension cord for my welder that or every time I want to weld on it I got to pull it into the garage so I can get the, close enough to the welder so yeah this should be a fun project but yeah anyways look back to my story what I'm, my plans Cab off, engine out, box of frame, make up the new, I'm going to need to make a new engine cross member for the front there to carry the front end of the engine, transmission cross member, get the engine and transmission mounted up in the truck. Uh, we're going to be going with a divorce transfer case. Tip to all you married men out there, don't Google that while you're in bed with your wife. It can lead to an interesting conversation. But anyways, uh, divorced uh, Ford NP205, which I haven't found one yet. I'm still kind of looking. There's a lot of Dor D Dorge and Sh Sherby. Little power stroke heading up the road. But anyways, there's a lot of Dodge and Chevy uh, MP205s out there fairly cheap, but I can't seem to find a Ford. I haven't really found a solid answer on if you can take the dodge and flip it over but so I'm just gonna see if I can find a Ford at time and I'll have to have custom drive shafts all made and so there's gonna be a lot of this is very uncharted territory for me and uh, I'm hoping that I can I have the resources and everything to be able to do it so yeah get the engine transmission in drop the cab back on I hope that it fits might end up having to do a body lift or uh, get out the grinder and the hammer and beat the firewall in and get things to fit and then uh, and then work on all the wiring and stuff get it all to communicate with each other and then uh, it'll be a beautiful thing it'll be very beautiful <laughs> brings a tear to my eye um, so essentially what finally did the trucking because I've had this engine now for like a month and a half now and uh, like I said I really wanted to test fire it I've just been trying to get it starter and I've been having trouble and uh, so last night we had the truck out and we're heading we're heading down the highway we're getting on the highway anyways and all of a sudden this giant geyser started shooting up from the front of the truck it was actually really cool it was just like you know and Jessica goes, what is that? And I'm like, well, it's red, so it's either coolant or transmission fluid. Give it a second. Once it starts hitting the windshield here, we'll be able to tell for sure. It was coolant. So uh, knowing that I had an engine sitting in the garage, I kind of just wanted to get home. And so I kind of pushed it a little bit, got her pretty toasty. Pretty sure that we probably did some damage. There might be a warped head in there. But I was able to, I got it halfway home, parked it, let it cool down for a little bit. And uh, walked home, grabbed another car, went back out. And a couple hours later, we went and picked it up, and I was able to drive it home. But the, uh, the radiator actually split. I don't know if you can see right there where the bottom tank attaches to the radiator. It actually split wide open. My JB Weld didn't hold that together. It's been leaking here for, uh, well, since I got the truck, it's been leaking right there. Uh, I guess uh finally got sick of it yesterday and blew into two pieces and just shot straight up right through there and all over the front of the truck. So 
after that I don't really feel all that comfortable driving the truck around knowing that it's probably done for you know so we're gonna start tearing it apart and uh, one way or another we're gonna do something here because either way we got to get the radiator fixed so